All right, let's look at section 5.1. Um, there's a lot going on in this section, so we've got several examples. I think I've got about six set up here for us to work through. So um, the first few problems just give you, give you a table like this, and then they ask you to identify whether or not the table it gives you is a probability distribution. And so in order for one of these tables to be a probability distribution, we, we need two things. Got to have both of them, okay? So each probability needs to be between zero and one. It's okay if it's zero, it's okay if it's one. So one way to say that is between zero and one inclusively. And then the second thing we need is that if we add the probabilities together, They have to add up to one. Okay. So if we look at, at this table, then what do you think? Does it pass those two? Um, what I'm looking at is it, it's going to fail on the first one, okay, because of this probability. Okay. That probability is negative 0 0.1, that's smaller than zero. So that means it fails on property number one. So on this one, it gives you multiple choice. So you'd say, no, this is not a probability distribution uh, because each probability is not between zero and one. Okay. Let's check property two though. It says probabilities add up to one. Okay, so if we try that on this one, let's see, we've got negative 0.1 plus 0.65 plus 0.45. And we do get one on that one. So this one's okay on the second property, but not the first. So this one's not a probability distribution. Because it doesn't meet property number one. Let's look at another one. What about this one? Same thing. We're trying to figure out if it's a discrete probability distribution. Uh, looks like I'm... Missing the line here. I don't know how I lost that. Okay, so if we check property number one, is each probability between zero and one? So that one's between zero and one, that one's between zero and one, that one's between zero and one. So we're good on property number one. What about property number two? We gotta add the probabilities together. So 0.37 plus 0.17 plus 0.4. We get, I'll write it down, we don't get one. Okay. What do we get? We get 0.94. Okay. So since we don't get one, okay, we fail on the second property. Okay, so this is not a probability distribution. Okay. And then on the multiple choice, we have to say why, and we would say because the sum of the probabilities does not equal one. Okay. Let's look at another one. What about this one here? Sorry, didn't leave myself quite enough room. So if we check this one, each one of our probabilities, okay, they're between zero and one, and if we add the probabilities together, what do we get? Um, okay, so 0.34 plus 0.29 plus 0.37, we get one. Okay, so this one meets both properties, so this is a probability distribution. And the reason would be because each probability is between zero and one, and the sum of the probabilities equals one. And so it meets both properties, so this one is a probability distribution. Okay. Let's look at this next problem. So on this one, we have to make our own probability distribution. 
the way I know we have to do that is because it tells us to um, find the expected value. So to get the expected value, we have to have a probability distribution to do that calculation. So first we have to set up our own probability distribution. So to make our own table this time. So we need the possible outcomes and we need the probability of each outcome. Okay. Let's look at it. It says we're drawing cards. And if we draw a card with a value of two or less, we win $16. If not, we lose $4. Okay, so what are our two outcomes? We either win $16, so I'm going to put plus 16. It'll be win $16, or we can lose $4, and since we're losing it, I'm going to write that negative 4. Okay. So now we have to come up with the probabilities for each one of these. So you might not be familiar with a deck of cards, so... Um, each deck of cards, We've got ace, king, queen, ace, yeah, I don't know why I wrote it in that order. Ace, king, queen, jack, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Okay. And it this tells us that aces are considered the highest card in the deck. Sometimes you can count them as one, but we're going to count them as higher than a king here. Okay. And we have we have four suits. Hang with each deck of cards. So we've got 13 cards there, and we've got four suits. Let's see if I can draw these. We've got hearts. We've got diamonds. We've got clubs. And then we've got spades. See how I do there. That's not very good, but that's what you're going to get. Okay. So we've got four suits. And for each one of those four suits, we've got 13 cards in each one of those suits. So a total of 52 cards in the deck. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, it says if we draw a card with a value of two or less, well, the way we're thinking about it, we only have one way in each suit that we can draw a two or less, and that's if we draw a two. Okay, there's no way to draw less. Okay, so if we draw a two, we're going to win. Okay, so how many twos are there in the deck? Well, there's one in each suit. So we've got one, two, three, four twos in the deck okay, out of 52 cards. That means our probability of winning this bet is four out of 52. You can reduce that if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay. So then if we've got four ways we can win, how many ways do we have we can lose? How many loser cards do we have in there? Well, you could count them, um, but another way you can come up with it is you can just subtract. There's 52 total cards. 52 minus 4 is 48. So we've got 48 out of 52 is our probability of losing. Okay. So now we're ready. We can find the expected value. Okay. And the expected value has a formula, but you really don't have to, really don't have to use the formula. Okay, you can... You can just kind of remember what it's telling you to do. So it says we're going to take each outcome. So here's my first outcome, 16. Multiply it by its probability. Okay. We're going to do that for each outcome, and then we're going to add those together. So my next one's negative 4 times its probability of 48 out of 52. Okay. So let's see what we get there. Remember, we're dealing with money here, so our answer is going to be dollars. And so if we do 16, and you can do times 4 divided by 52, or you can use the fraction button on your calculator. Um, either way you want to do that. So 16 times 4 over 52 plus negative 4 times 48 over 52. Okay. And as a decimal, I'm getting something like negative 2.46415 something. And but we're going to, it says round to the nearest two decimal places, so to the nearest cent. So we're going to call it negative $2.46, 2.46. .2 That's my expected value on step one. 
Okay? So what that means is every time you make this bet, on average, you can expect to lose $2.46 per bet. Okay? That's our expected value. Step two says if we played this game 200, I mean, 762 times, how much would we expect to win or lose? This step's really easy. Okay. Oh, I didn't leave myself much room there, did I? Hang on, let me pause and get us some more room. Okay, got us a little more room to work with now. So we want to know if we play the game 762 times, how much we're going to win or lose. All we have to do is multiply. So we expect, on average, we're going to lose $2.46 per bet. So we do 762 times negative 2.46. So 762 times negative 2.46. And that was not a good idea for us to do that because we expect to lose $1,874.52. Let me move that up a little bit. Okay, so step two, that's our number. Right, let's look at, sorry about that. Let's look at the next one here. This one gives us the table. So this one's a little bit easier. Okay, this one gives us the table and tells us to find the expected value. Okay, so if we want the expected value, we take each outcome, each X, and multiply it by its probability and add all those together. So our first outcome is 5 times its probability of 0.1. Plus, next we have 6 with a probability of 0.1. Then we have 7 with a probability of 0.2. Then we have 8 with a probability of 0.1. Then we have 9 with a probability of 0.2. Finally, we have 10 with a probability of 0.3. Okay, so now it's just a matter of typing it in the calculator. So let's see, 5 times 0.1 plus 6 times 0.1 plus 7 times 0.2 plus 8 times 0.1 plus 9 times 0.2 10 times 0.3. What do we get there? We get an expected value of 8.1. It says round to one decimal place, so we don't even have to round because it comes out to one decimal place. 8.1 there. Okay. Look at another one of these where we have to make the table because they can be they can be tricky because you might not understand about cards or on this one we're throwing two dice you might not might not think about how you could figure out the probability on this so this one says we're going to throw two dice if the sum of the two dice is eight or more we win eleven dollars if not we lose five dollars find the expected value and so again we got to make our own table. So we want the outcomes and the probability of each outcome. And so what are our outcomes here? Well, if we win, we win $11. If we lose, we lose $5. Okay. And then we need to figure out these probabilities. And okay. so the way we can, we can figure out these probabilities is we, we can kind of make a little table. And... We make this little table, then we can just count to figure out our probability. So we're rolling two six-sided die, so our possibilities for each die are one through six. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And, and we're rolling two of those. Okay. So we can kind of fill out a little table here because we're going to add the two dice together. So if we roll a 1 and a 1, we get 2. If we roll a 1 and a 2, we get 3. A 1 and a 3 gives us 4. 1 and a 4 gives us 5. Then 6. Then 7. And as you fill the table out, you'll kind of see a little pattern, and you don't have to think about it really anymore. You can just fill it out using the pattern. So let's look what happens on the next row. We've got 2 and a 1 is 3. 2 and 2 is 4. 2 and 3 is 5. 2 and 4 is 6. 2 and 5 is 7. 2 and 6 is 8. So you can see we're just going up by 1 on each row. So the next one would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 
eight, nine, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the last row is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. So how many possibilities do we have in total? We've got six choices on each die. So six times six means we have 36 total possibilities. And we can use this table to figure out our probability on our, this distribution here. So it says if the sum of two dice is eight or more, we win. So how many ways do we have that that can happen? Well, eight or more, that's these possibilities. So what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen ways we can win. Okay, so we our probability of winning is fifteen out of thirty-six. Okay. And then what's our probability of losing gonna be? Well you can count the ones we don't have circled, or we can subtract. We can do thirty-six minus fifteen will give us 21 out of 36. And so that's the toughest part on these is getting the probability. Now we want the expected value. And so that's going to be our 11 times the probability of 15 out of 36. And then our next outcome is negative 5 times its probability of 21 out of 36. And remember, we're dealing with money, so we can round to two decimal places. So let's see what we get. 11 times 15 out of 36 plus negative 5 times 21 out of 36. So on this one, we're going to get 1.6 repeating. So that'll be $1.67 when we round to two decimal places. So this is our expected value. And then the next step will say, if you did this bet 492 times or some kind of random number, how much could you expect to win or lose? So again, you just multiply by however many times you're doing the bet. Okay. One more, and it's the longest one, but I'll, I've only given you one of these, and one of these last ones, because it is, is long. So we want the standard deviation of this probability distribution. And so this is a two-step problem. Um, if you look at the formula for standard deviation or a discrete probability distribution out of this section, and then one of the things we need is we need the expected value. If you look at the formula, it calls it mu, they like the mean because it's, it turns out it's the same thing as the mean for one of these tables. Okay, but if we want the expected value here, we do it just like we've been doing. So 6 times 0.1 plus 7 times 0.3 plus 8 times 0.3 plus 9 times 0.1 plus 10 times 0.2. Okay, so let's see what we get there. 7 times 0.3 plus 8 times 0.3 plus 9 times 0.1 10 times 0.2. Okay, so if we punch that in our calculator, well, this one's coming out nice. So coming out nice and even, so we're getting exactly 8. Or it says around the one decimal place, so I guess if we're being picky, we'd call it 8.0. Now we need that number. We need that number to do our standard deviation calculation. All right, so we want standard deviation here. Formula. Okay, it says we want the square root of the, I'm sorry, of the sum of each one of these x's squared times its probability
minus the expected value or the mean squared. I know that looks confusing. Okay, so it's almost easier to just remember what to do. Okay, but the, the big thing to remember is that this expected value is going to go there. It's going to be the mean squared. It's going to be the expected value squared. And so this is going to look, it's going to start out looking a lot like the expected value formula. Because in, for expected value, we, we just don't have the square on the xi. Okay? So when we're starting out here, we're going to have 6 squared times 0 0.1 plus 7 squared times 0.3. And so this first part looks just like expected value, except we're squaring the outcomes. Plus 8 squared times 0.3 plus 9 squared times 0.1 plus 10 squared times 0.2. But then we're going to subtract the expected value squared, so minus 8 squared. And then we've got one more important step. Okay, we've got, since it's standard deviation, we've got to take the square root of all of that. You can take the square root at the end in your calculator if you don't want to mess with typing all this underneath the, the radical. Okay, that's usually what I do. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 6 squared times 0 0.1 plus 7 squared times 0 0.3 plus 8 squared times 0.3 plus 9 squared times 0.1 plus 10 squared times 0.2 minus 8 squared. Now I'm going to hit equal. I'm getting 1.6, but that's not my final answer because I need to take the square root of that. So I'm going to take the square root of my answer. And I'm getting 1.2649 and then a bunch of numbers after that. And on this one, it told us how to tell us to round. It says round our answer to one decimal place. So when we round our answer to one decimal place, that will round to 1.3. So the first part of the formula is almost like expected value, except you square the outcomes. And then you subtract the expected value squared. And then you take the square root. So the formula looks super complicated just because you're probably not used to looking at that notation. But it's, it's long, but it's really not that hard. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this section.